What's up guys, I'm Sim, and today I will show you how to install OpenApp onto one of these. A Pine64 single board computer. Welcome back everyone. Again, my name is Sim, and you're watching Smartest House, a channel where I'll be showing you how I design and build my own smart home. And today's topic Installing OpenHab on a Pine board. I will be talking about OpenHab more in the upcoming videos, but if you haven't heard about it before, it is a free and open source home automation software that I will be using to tie everything together for a cohesive system. To get started, you will need to head over to my blog page at smartersouse.net, find the post named Installing OpenHab on a Pine64 and click on the Download PineHab link. I talk about why I call it PineHab in the post. I've also added the link to that post in the description below. While it's downloading, and it might take a while, because it's about 2.2 GB in size, you can make sure you have an SD card ready. Your SD card needs to be a class 10. You'll see that marked on the card itself, and at least 4 GB in size. I do recommend getting a 16 GB one, because they're not really that expensive, and then you have more than enough room for whatever you may want to do with OpenApp in the future. Pop the SD card into an adapter and then into your laptop or desktop. Now you'll need a tool to burn the downloaded image onto the SD card. I'm using Etcher, which is a cross-platform tool for creating bootable disks. You could also use Win32 Disk Imager if you're on Windows or the DD tool in Terminal when you're on Mac or Linux. If you don't have any of the tools set up, I definitely recommend getting Etcher. I've added the link to Etcher's homepage in the description. There you can find the download link and instructions how to use it. Burning the image with Etcher couldn't be simpler. Just choose the ISO file, the device and click burn. This can take a while to burn and verify, so be patient. Once finished, eject the SD card and insert it to the Pine64's card slot. Hook up Ethernet, power cable and then plug in the power adapter. Make sure your power supply is 5 volts and can supply at least 3 amps of current. Usually the first thing to check when a single board computer starts acting funny is the power supply. 3 amps for the Pine is plenty and you shouldn't have any issues. When the Pine app image is booted for the first time, it'll run its first startup script and may take a little while. Wait about 10 to 15 minutes to be safe. To work with OpenApp, you'll need the IP address of the machine it's running on. There is a good tool that scans your network and reports back all the IP addresses used and it's called Angry IP Scanner. I've added the link to it below. I though like to log into my router and under the DHCP tab, I can see all the IP addresses used and who uses them. Now every router is different, but usually the address, username and password are written on a sticker underneath the router. By now, PineApp should be finished with its first boot and everything should be aligned. To see if OpenApp is running, open a web browser and type in your IP address, colon 8080. And you should see this. I recommend you click on the demo tab which will install the OpenApps demo files and lets you use it and look around to get familiar with it. Afterwards, you can just re-image the SD card and get a fresh starting point. If you start building your own system, you'll need to change the default passwords. I'm using the Pine64 as a headless unit, meaning it won't have a monitor, keyboard or a mouse. Instead, I will use SSH to log in and do everything. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can use SSH in Terminal. If you're on Windows, a great tool is Putty. But Windows actually has an SSH client built in, so you don't have to download anything. To enable it, click on the start button and select the little gear icon for settings. Then select apps. From there, click on manage optional features. Scroll down and you'll find open SSH client. Click on it and click install. If you're using the Windows SSH client, type in PineHab at your IP address. The default password is pinehab1234. Accept the SSH key by typing yes and if everything went right, you're logged in. Now to change the passwords. For root, type sudo passwd and you get prompted to enter a new password. For user, type sudo pinehab password and same again, enter your new password. This image also has Samba installed. Samba is simply put a bit of software that shares files to a local network. In our case, I've configured it to share OpenApp's configuration files. To change the password for Samba, type the following command and enter your new password. 
Now we need to change the password for the MQTT broker. If you don't know what MQTT is, then don't worry, I'll discuss this in the upcoming videos. But for now, to change the password, type the following command. Last thing we need to check is if Samba is working properly and we can access all the OpenAMP files. If you're on Windows, you simply need to open your file browser and go to Network. Here, select Pine64SO. The username is OpenHab and the default password is PineHab1234. And that is it. You have a running OpenHab system waiting for you to configure it. I have all these steps with a bit more detail in my blog at smartesthouse.net. So if you haven't yet, go and check it out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them. I've also added links in the description of all the things I would recommend for this system and where to get them. Hope you liked this video and if you did, subscribe and click on the bell icon so you'll be notified if a new video comes out. In the next video, I'll show you the easiest way to start editing OpenHab's configuration files. Until then, take care and I'll see you next time.